Hey there, Tarek Maryface here, and welcome to a tutorial. We'll do the Bendix King, um, basically, Navcom and Transponder on the Cessna 172, HUA Cessna 172R trainer. Uh, very, very good aircraft, highly recommend it. So, let's turn on the battery, and let's turn on the avionics, and it's here for the autopilot. There goes the autopilot, it's working. Okay, so we're going to start with this top bit, Bendix King, uh, KMA26. Okay, so we'll start from this side. You've got the outer marker stuff, so this will light up and make a sound whenever you pass over the markers, outer, mid, and inner marker. You've got this stuff. Okay, you've got high sensitivity, low sensitivity, and a test. And basically this is the microphone sensitivity, if I'm not mistaken. And um, basically it's just to, you can arrange it so that, it'll be appropriate for your particular microphone and again this this is the intercom stuff which is all about isolating the passengers from you or the back passengers from the front two from the two front pilots etc etc we don't need these HA hasn't bothered simulating them since there's no way to tell them apart okay this right here is basically the audio bit in the sense Whatever is lit up is what we listen to. So if I were to turn this on now, and someone was to start talking on the radio, I would hear from this, right, uh, on COM1, if from COM1, basically. So I click this, I would listen from COM1 and COM2. So two people start talking at once, I'm going to listen to two pe different people talking at the same time. Uh, this can be useful, for example, if you're listening, if you, they tell you to monitor ATIS, or you need you're about to change frequencies while you're still in contact with a previous uh, controller. You know it, it will help. Basically, it will help you do loads of things. Um, but yeah, so it's kind of useful. Com three doesn't work because uh, because there's no Com three here. You got Nav one and Nav two to help you uh, listen to the identifiers. You got the marker, you got the DME, and you got the ADF. And you can put these all at the same time if you want. I don't see why you would do that, but you can if you want. Um, this is basically uh, a selector panel for which frequency your well, which which com uh, active frequency you will be transmitting on. So if you switch from C1 to C2, you're now transmitting on on com2 and not com1. And what you'll notice is that that light switches automatically to com2 if you only have one of them on, because you need to be able to hear the frequency in which you're trying to transmit into. So it's just an automatic thing. And if you press the both of them, nothing happens. They just you can listen to both of them. C three doesn't work, obviously. I am I have yet to discover what EMG and PA are. I don't think they're useful for us in flight simulator, though. Okay, so that's the, this bit done. Let's move on to the Bendix King KX one fifty five A. Turn on the Nav one using this button. Uh, we'll descend a little bit. By the way, Nav one. Uh, Nav and COM1 is exactly the same as Nav and COM2, so we'll just work on one. Okay, so press that to turn it on. Comes on online, and you've got these two. We'll start with the COM. You've got the standby and the active frequencies, okay? Very easy, very simple. And you basically use the, the inner knob, the one that pokes out, to change the second set of frequencies. And as you see, right now it's changing by 0, 5. Now, if I want to change it by uh, 2, 5, you pull, and it's even written here, by clicking on it, and it comes out, and you now can switch it by 0, 2, 5. So there you go, that's done. Uh, then use the outer ring to change the big numbers. So once you find the frequency you want, you click on that, and it becomes active. If you want to modify this one by itself, click on standby for a while, and the standby frequency disappears, and now you'll be directly changing this right here. Um, sorry, you can see Chavney, um, Chavney uh, Atis is around here. So there you go. So that's pretty cool. If you want to bring back this, the standby, just click on that again, and it pops up. You can, um, additionally to this, have stored frequencies. So if we click on this, channel 1, channel 2, channel 3, channel 4, etc. And there's 32 channels, however, only 9 are saved, so only 9 appear. So if I want to use any of these frequencies, for example, the tower frequency at this airport, I just I can do two things. I can leave it for a while until channel 1 disappears and click that. 
or I can simply just click that and then switch automatically and it'll, and there it goes, stay. Um, that's, and, uh, bleh, that's it really. If I want to program a new channel, and click on this for a while, and PG for program appears. And now all 32 channels will appear. Okay, and the ones that haven't been programmed will appear like this. So let's say, let's program channel 10 for the eighters at this airport. So now what you're going to do is you're going to click on standby, and this will start, and this will start beeping. So now my objective is to go one, three, one, zero, two. There you go. Switch again. Click. And click on that. Channel 10. Switch. And it's there. And you've got the information. And as you can see, you can listen to the ATIS. Happy days. Good stuff. Okay, well, that's it with the comm. So you've learned how to modify the standby frequency, um, how to modif how to put it active, how to modify the active directly, how to bring up saved channels, and how to program them. Remember, there are 32 channels you can save. Okay, let's look at the nav bit now. Just like the comm, you've got a standby and an active one. So actually, what we're going to do is we will um, we will tune into an actual VOR here, 1147, which is RBT VOR. So here you go. Uh, we'll tune in, and that should, there you go, you can see it right here. It's active, it's right there. Okay. Now, um, if you want to make sure it works, just click on that, and it should give a few minutes before the Morse code appears. Um, I don't know why it's. I've been asking around the forums. They don't seem to. The Morse doesn't seem to appear on mine. This never plays, but whatever. I do. I've, I'm still working that out with people from from the HOA. Okay. So we've got an active frequency. Now we've got this mode thing. We've learned how to. We can still um, do this. Modify the frequency directly, just like in in the com stuff. Bring back the standby back up. Now we can click on mode. If you click on mode, look, you can see this line here, and you can you can mo directly modify this frequency as well. Sorry, this is right. The OBS is shining, so um, there you go. I change the frequency. Uh, no longer on an active VOR in this case, and it dies. So now I press on that, give it a few seconds, and it's back online. And if I pull on this, you see pull OBS. This OBS thing starts shining. And all that is, is basically this, the OBS here. Now, what you see is that it's the same principle. You can spin it until eventually it centers. And you can see the center is right here. Bam. See, that's more or less a center, um, center line. And if you do the same thing here, so it says a 0 to 0, you go to 0 to 0 here, it'll center. And as you see, this is the from um, radio because it's got that arrow pointing down. If you want to do the two radio, um, you can see this arrow. This is a from because it's pointing downwards. So when two radio is going to be zero, so two two zero two zero zero. There you go, and you see that arrow points up now. Okay, and that shows that you're going towards the VOR and not away from it. Okay, so that's a handy little bit. And now we've just figured out that we we are in a radio. Uh, to the VOR of that 200 more or less and actually you can test you can find that out using the next mode which is the following actually sorry before we do this remember this is just like this thing right here it's just that it's digital rather than analog now if you click on this mode to it shows your radial towards the VOR so it doesn't matter if you've got let's go back if you've got this on that, for example, whatever number. Oh, shoot, let's bring it back. Um, doesn't matter if you got any number uh, and it's completely off, you have no idea what's going on. If you click on mode, right there, it'll tell you straight away on which radio you are of two words. And if you press mode again, the from appears and that tells you 020, just like we saw before, from the VOR. Now, this is useful, the from, I think, more than the two because. The chew is useful if you're doing a VFR, you've reached your waypoint, and you want to find out which heading to turn. Click, get you get two, so two zero zero, turn to heading two zero zero, and then if you want to find out your exact location, get the from from this VOR and another one on the nav two, and you can pinpoint your location relatively accurately.
sorry, hiccups. Okay, so that's pretty cool. And then we've got the mode, um, uh, the time ela uh, elapsed time mode. And this will basically is a timer that counts upwards since the avionic was turned on. Uh, if I were to turn this off and turn it back on, I think that it's safe to say it would be back to zero. There you go, back to zero. It's now counting up again. Um, uh, if we want to do a countdown, for example, you know, you're doing a leg that's meant to be seven minutes and you want the, an alarm to go off at seven minutes, press the standby key. All right, so now you, you rotate the outer wheel for seven minutes, rotate the inner wheel. Uh, if it's pulled, it'll do in, in seconds, but if you press it in, it'll do in tens of seconds. Okay, and then once you do that, repress the standby key and shoot, repress the standby key and starts a countdown and at zero 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 an alarm will go off so that's it that's all the modes from the navcom so pretty cool pretty useful stuff let's move on we don't need this because this is the same as the one we just looked at we're not doing ADF for now uh, what we will be doing now though is the transponder this bad boy so let's turn it off it's on off now uh, let's turn it on it's on off now so we've got standby and what this shows is that it's on, it shows a standby, uh, standby squat code, but it's not transmitting. So you fly on this, the only way ATC are going to find you is if they've got like an old school uh, echo radar kind of thing, or military technology. Um, you can set up a, a, uh, any, any sort of transponder code, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 1, 2, 3, so for example, and when you when you go on and on and out, it will transmit on that squawk. You can do the test, and they'll, they'll do internal tests as well as test every light visually, so you can see all the lights except for the GND are working. Switch it once more, on, and now what that does is the tower or the controller will receive, will see you as a as squawking 0, 1, 2, 3. As a position on the radar, it will not see how high you are. It will not, just show your position. If you go on ALT, now what it does is shows your altitude in terms of flight level, not barometric altitude, not QNH, not QFE, not QFF, but flight level. It'll, so it will assume uh, a, a pressure of 299 or 2 or 1013, depending if you're in Europe or the US or actually the rest of the world or the US. Let's make it that quick. Okay. That's pretty cool. Now, if you, if you see here, you've got VFR button, 7000. I've changed that. The default is 1200. And if you want to know how to do that, this is how you do it. You go back on standby, right? Uh, let it, Give it a second. Let's say you're in the US, 120. Oh, that's not zero. So clear. Ah, good opportunity. Clear to go back one number, 00. zero. Now you're going to right-click ident, and you'll see that it'll, it'll stay depressed and then you click VFR and then you click any random code you want and then go to here, go to ALT for example you've got this old code, press VFR, 1200 appears I want 700 so because I'm in the US and um, in Europe, sorry 7000 right click VFR any random code and there you go, and now it's been saved click VFR and it's one two zero zero. That's actually a bug in uh, in the HOA Cessna. Don't worry about it. Um, all we have to do is do that again a couple times. But yeah, sorry. So that's not very well. Not a very well ended tutorial. But you saw it worked the first time, so you know it works. It's just a bug from the HOA uh, from the HOA avionics. Something I need to write them about. Okay, well that's it. Uh, thanks for watching. If you have any questions. Or if you find that I've made any mistakes, please feel free to tell me so. As you can see, my nav one thing did not work in the end. I, I don't know why. It just doesn't work. Um, I've, I've asked several times and they've all ignored me. So there you go. Okay, well, I'm Tarek Maryface and I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you have any questions, feel free to trust me and I'll see you guys next time.